We've talked about the languages that are built into your Commodore 64 microcomputer. But there are languages that you can also add to the microcomputer that are not built in already. I'd like to talk about a few of them. First of all, I'd like to talk about something that is really not a computer language. It's an operating system. That's CPM. It stands for Control Program Microprocessor. And it's an operating system that is, it's not a language to write programs in. It's a way to communicate with a computer to make it work. Quite different from the one that you've seen before. Now, let's take a look at a CPM system. We have one built into the computer here now. It's similar to programming systems used on other large microprocessor computers, and therefore there may be programs you can buy which fit on these other computers that will also work on the Commodore CPM system. It's a transferability of program type of system. There's a lot of computers which use CPM. Let's take a look at what we have here. Now we have a CPM system. There's quite a different message on the screen. It says Commodore 64, 44K CPM system. And it has two copyright statements on it. But the interesting thing is, you can tell it's not basic because it doesn't say ready. Instead, what it prints is a capital letter A followed by a greater than sign that looks a bit like an arrow. And what you'd find is that all of the communications we've learned for basic don't work on this system. In other words, if I say, print or catalog or save, none of them work because CPM has its own language and its own way of doing things. For example, if I want to see what's on the disk, I might say DIR for directory. That's what I have to type in, DIR, not catalog. I'm doing this and now a CPM directory, which looks quite a bit different from a basic directory, is appearing on the screen. We won't go through any of these programs or indicate what they do at the moment, but the sort of thing that's interesting here is that when we want a program, we often don't say load. The program will come in, but we have to just give its name. For example, there's a program in there to help look for bugs, look for errors in programming. It's called Dynamic Debugging Tool. And because it's there to get rid of bugs, we abbreviate it. What else? DDT. To bring it in, all we do is type its name, DDT, press return, and the program starts to come in here. It will take a few moments for the program to come in, but when it does, we'll find once again, we're still working in something of a foreign language with a computer. DDT it doesn't work like regular programs, and we'll find that the screen doesn't behave like regular programs. It's in now. If I want to look at the registers in the computer, I can type X and return, and we get a printout that's showing us there. But it's not our purpose here to show in detail how to use CPM, simply that we have a totally different line of communications from computer into the system when we have a different operating system like CPM in place. Let's take DDT out with using a control C command, which is quite standard in CPM. CPM operating system itself will come back in and the system will take over. Again, let me emphasize, you don't have basic. If you want basic, you'd have to bring one in from disk. There might be several basics you can get with CPM. You might bring in other languages and not basic. Pilot or Logo or Pascal or COBOL or Fortran. There's plenty of them. But in they come and now we're back to CPM and we once again have our A and greater than sign, the prompt saying, CPM wants our next command. Now let's not continue with CPM. It's a rather a specialized field, but instead I'd like to show you what makes up CPM. This is a rather big box that we plug into the computer to make CPM work. In fact, it's this big because it contains an entire computer system of its own. There's an extra processor in here to make CPM do the things that it does. That's why it's rather large, rather complex, but that, of course, is the key to its compatibility. CPM has the same processor chip as many other computers, and therefore it will work the same. Okay, that's probably all we need to say about operating systems at the moment. Let's talk about a few other computer languages. Logo is a language which has been getting a good deal of attention in education. The most visible part of Logo is that it's a turtle language, which can be explained this way. It's as if we have a little controllable device rolling around on the screen, 
And when we say go forward 10 paces, it moves that distance. When we say turn right, it turns right and so on. This is often used for younger children in the school environment to learn the rules of logic. Logo is a very interesting language, but let's do a couple of simple turtle things first. We'll say uh, forward 50. And as soon as we do so, and as soon as I press return, the turtle will appear. It will move forward 50. There it is. You can see it's moved up. The turtle is a little white triangle near the top. Now I'll say, well, let's turn right, uh, let's say 135. And we can see that it's turned around. Now if I say forward 50 again, we can see that the turtle has now moved through an angle. Now with these sort of commands, move forward, turn left, turn right, move a certain distance, we can do some very pretty things on the screen. In particular, if we want to, we can build pre-written routines to do certain things. For example, if I say to the computer, whoops, if I must spell it correctly, however, triangle, the computer will draw a triangle on the spot. It will move forward the right distance, turn to the right angle, and do several other things. The definition of a triangle is involved in this case with the definition of a number of angles, but we have, we can see that definition if we want to, but the important thing is that if we have something called triangle, we can call it several times. Let me call triangle, and there's a triangle. Let me call it again. The turtle has moved slightly. If I call it again, it will draw a triangle in a slightly offset position. And again, triangle, and you can see we're starting to build a sort of pattern. This is the sort of thing that can be very enriching for younger children. They can work around with various sort of diagrams. We'll complete this triangle, which I think we call a star. And here we go, drawing a series of triangles so they come together like a fan, a wheel, or a sort of very highly multi-pointed star. There it is. We could also draw other figures. For example, we have one composed of a number of circles. If we say circle, there is a circle being drawn from the turtle starting point. If we want to draw a series of circles, we could ask for, say, a flower, which is a series of inter... There goes the first circle. The turtle will shift and draw another one. And you can see that something which is rather flower-like is being drawn on the screen. Now, these are all very nice, but what's the point of it? Well, first of all, it teaches children the ideas behind logic. The whole idea be behind describing a flower in what we might call a subroutine of the computer, and they're just calling it up by saying its name, teaches something about building logic and building it in a module. It's there to be used, and then we can build many flowers. We might build a flower bed by calling the command flower many times in different situations. It's, in a way, a logic trainer. There are other turtle programs, such as, for example, the Turtle Graphics Package, turned out by HES. Logo is particularly an interesting language in that it's based on a much older language called LISP. LISP stands for List Processing Language, and it's a language of how things interrelate. LISP is traditionally the language of artificial intelligence, that's a whole story in itself, but what we really have here is a very sound language with some very interesting trimmings on it, mostly used in education. Let's touch this talk for a moment about some of the other languages that you can get for the Commodore 64. We can get some through CPM, as we mentioned before, and there are also languages such as Pascal, which is a very formalized computer language, uh, Pilot, which is an authoring language for educators, as we've mentioned before. We've talked about Logo. There's a new language from Denmark called Komal, which combines the ease of basic with the power of a language like Pascal. And there are many, many others. Why would you pick another language besides basic? Largely because you have a certain job to do, and other languages are better suited for the job that you're after. For most of us beginners, the thing that we need to know is that basic comes with it. Basic's probably a good way to start. There's always that powerful thing called machine language on the inside. But finally, if you find that basic for some reason doesn't measure up to a certain job you have, there are other languages available. You can take basic out, you can plug the new languages in.